yeah amdp we have seen a simple amdp creation uh, yesterday and we have uh, some some of the fields from our trip header table and uh, we just uh, checking those the same same fields from our amdp and we are returning them back so it's a plain uh, simple amdp okay but uh, a, a small um, uh, correction that i have mentioned uh, yesterday so here if you see this uh, database function okay so whenever we say it's not uh, it's not a table function then i said we are going to use this as an amdp uh, uh, class method in our programs but along with this without this extension and it's going to be a database procedure here so both are same in terms of hana database but this is the uh, this is the segregation uh, what we do in terms of uh, amdps so if we say abap amdp or amdp procedures so amdp procedures or uh, for abap usage and cds table functions are for cds usage or we can simply refer it as table function so if we have um, amdp class created for table function then we will have this uh, extension here mentioning the uh, cds entity name here and also function keyword here and if we are using or creating an amdp a method for a map a map purpose then this extension will not be here and also this function instead of this function there will be procedure so this is a, a small correction so whenever we uh, mention as well if we say amdp procedure then it's definitely from a map when we say table function it's a amdp um with respect to cds okay and now um let me uh, move on to this one so here um as we are writing all the uh, native native spl functionalities at this place so again we have a set of native hana functions available and let me uh, go to the url uh, i'm not sure where the url is and Okay, I have the reference uh, on these documents I added, so you can straight away go ahead to these useful URLs and you can pick it from there. Um, if you see CDS views and uh, CDS MDP. CDS views about come on okay that's fine let me go to my HANA platform So here we will have all the 
uh, HANA functions, but this is the generic link. But if we understand, this is really a very good guide. If you see here, um, HANA SQL, uh, SQL reference guide for SAP HANA. Okay. And uh, if you see SQL script references as well, I will be going to SQL reference here. And uh, SQL, SQL reference, SQL functions. So in these functions, so these are all these are all the things whatever we see here. Everything everything can be um, adopted, and we can write each and every line of code what we see here. Okay, all these uh, functions, whatever, so they all can be um, achieved and written inside this one. So what we know is. Um, I think very minimal, but we have a lot. If we want to use the HANA database effectively, we have all these uh, functionalities, but um, it's going to be again a new, um, a new, new topic for us. Okay, so it will be if we uh, completely spend, spend time on this one, it's going to be a new, again, a diversion from our uh, scope of uh, uh, training, but uh, at the same time we are not going to ignore it. So we will we will see how we will be using these um, uh, uh, functions into our uh, uh, AMDP. So for example, I'm going to these aggregate functions here. So these are all the aggregate functions available. Each and every uh, aggregate function has its own um, uh, meaning for it. But if you see, we don't have all these all these functions available at CDS level. So we have limited uh, functions available at CDS level. So if we want to um, uh, use any of the native SQL functions that we come across, and if we think that we if we are not able to uh, achieve something in, at the CDS layer, and if we come across um, uh, by in Google search or someone uh, saying or hearing from someone or something like that, then otherwise we can straight away come here and look for some relevant function, DB function. If it is available, we can make use of it and we can uh, push the code into AMDP rather um, well, writing on CDS. Otherwise, knowing each of the function at this HANA database level, it's going to be a, uh, really a tedious task. Again, learning completely a SQL script, native SQL script on HANA. This is, again, not completely um, complying to all the database. So this is, these SQL scripts are completely um, uh, uh, with respect to HANA database. And there may be some some of them are common, but not all of them common uh, uh, between the database. Those are available uh, in the industry. So here, uh, if we see <coughs> how we influence these or how we understand uh, these uh, aggregation functions, and here um, let's take this sum function as we know already already about this sum function and don't don't end up picking up uh, the wrong function and uh, trying to understand at the first time so pick up the some function what we are familiar and these terminologies will be easily uh, understandable so for example if you see here some all are distinct these are the optional keywords here okay now then expression we give the expression and after this and we will have an example um, underneath it and what what types of um, uh, returns or what what type of values or data types can be summed or aggregated is listed down here and the result type as well okay so some of the expression with window specification this window specification is nothing but whether if we have any uh, order by or uh, group by we can uh, we can specify some window there. That's what uh, window means here. And example, 
so this is the example so first the, this is the table creation and insertion of the data at the hana db level itself so um, we can see sql uh, sql console when when we enter into uh, hana database so in the console we can write these statements okay but we will not be writing any of these as we have already data in our tables we will ignore this creation and data population but this is illustrated here for our uh, understanding so let's say there is the data with this uh, there is some data with these records and how it's going to return a uh, return um, a result for us and how we are going to write uh, count or some some syntax in our uh, uh, emdp so same way we will we will be writing in emdp but here it's going to be a native completely native um, uh, behavior so in our amdp it is optional for us to include the field names in double quotations double quotes but if we think about hana database on cloud definitely we will be writing uh, double quotes when we referring to the field, field names okay so in our amdp here um, we have mentioned some aggregated values here so total expenses and uh, currency and this currency now is going to be um, invalid we won't be able to do this at the moment because um, yesterday i think i have made some changes on to this one for our better understanding so if you go and look into the uh, trip items table in the trip items table, I have made some corrections in the data. So whereas we will have the uh, multiple multiple currencies on a single trip. Uh, come on. Not sure. So that in the in that case, so we won't be able to uh, apply a straight aggregation on this one on this currency so we must need to uh, convert into a common currency and then we need to uh, aggregate the values so that's what we need to do so even that currency conversion we are going to apply at the db level itself so whereas we have that uh, uh, conversions available <coughs> like in our uh, cds as we have full idea uh, how how we use the currency conversion function uh, cds built-in function the same way we will be using um, using in db uh, mdp as well so if you look at this trip uh, items so we have some uh, uh, real uh, figures available here and also um, the, in the header table we have some uh, uh, trip uh, uh, trip statuses also uh, updated on the table so in this one we have so let's say if we take this there is this one trip number 39 so in this 39 it's a both the gbp at the moment but if you look at this 37 for example so it has usd and inr both together here so in this case if we sum up this value that's going to give us a, uh, a wrong value so it's going to give 103 uh, 100, but the currency will be different so in this case, either we we should be converting the currency into the uh, target or next uh, next line item currency, or uh, we should be converting everything into a common currency, and we should be uh, summing up on based on that. So that's what we should do. So let me. Um, uh, go ahead and apply the currency conversion 
and for currency conversion again we will be referring to our SQL function that available at the DB level so let me go ahead so this is SQL function uh, yeah that's okay and here we will have all the functions available with the alphabetical order but if we don't want to do that and we can go with the uh, category wise as well so in the category wise uh, let me data type uh, conversion functions so this is completely data type uh, string functions sql statements uh, let me look at it where is this not that one miscellaneous convert currency if you see in the miscellaneous uh, functions category we have uh, convert currency and in the cds functions we have only convert currency and convert unit but if you see here we have a lot more functions available to use in terms of um, the conversions so system uuid as well if we want to generate dynamic dynamic guid runtime and we have new uid uh, function here so these ones uh, everything we, we have a lot more features but we just pick up this uh, uh, convert currency at the moment if you see it's going to be the um, syntax so now as we know our um, uh, CDS function usage, so it will be very easy for us. So it, it shows us the list of parameters available on this particular um, uh, function. And now here we see it is clearly mentioned whether it is mandatory or not, mandatory or um, uh, optional here. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, use this one. And uh, below we have um, uh, an example as well. So here, if we want to mention um, the schema database is not required and uh, system, system time, what is this? Basically, okay. Parameters, so the error handling, if you see, um we can we can mention like we have in our cds view again okay so let me go ahead and use this function convert currency let me copy this one and if you see here there is an example mentioned like the field names the importing parameter names and what is going to be the field name and if we want we can straight away uh, go ahead and copy this uh, copy this function calling Let me go to my MDP. Okay. So here, where, where are my currency values? They are all in my uh, items table. So let me select items. Items equal to ZTH trip AI. And here we should uh, be comparing the client. So P underscore CLNT, that's fine. So because we haven't mentioned this in um, using, so now let me. Um, include that in between the con uh, converted amount 
So let me use this function here. Okay, so the amount field is going to be the uh, whatever the amount field we have in table for this uh, net value. Let me go and pick the field name total expenses. So let me go ahead and uh, input the total expenses and source unit is going to be our uh, uh, source currency here and this is the currency and now i'm going to queue the sorry okay so the schema um database we are going to uh, ignore this one and schema also uh, i think this is um, uh, hdp schema we are in at the moment let's go with system and we see that doesn't work then uh, s4 h hdb i think we will see that and target unit is going to be let me put it INR. let us convert into INR everything and then um, uh, use it so here if you see set to null <clears throat> if there is an error found then set to null and this client it is going to be zero zero well, as we copied it but we have a client parameter here p CLNT. So the client is being um, uh, passed to this. So amount IANA is going to be my uh, alias name for this conversion. And the date here, if you see um, this date, we have some fixed value here. But if uh, we want to uh, take it as a parameter from um, uh, from table function we can take it as a parameter or if we want to set this as a uh, system system date now we need to know how we uh, get the system date inside the amdp it's not like a session and uh, uh, system date now we are in different context we shouldn't forget that so again let us go here and uh, look for the system fields so let's session variables so these um wait uh, where is this not the session variables so not system Okay, case sensitive uh, date format. This is session context, but we don't want this session context. So somewhere it should be available date and time functions so if you see here the current date so this is the one which gives us the uh, to, today's date the system date here so current date let me uh, give that in current date but i think we might need to uh, convert it uh, let us try debugging that so obviously if we um, go with the, go with the mdp implementation and it will take some time as well and also we should be very careful um, about the error handlings so if there is an error occurred in this one it's going it's not going to be a uh, result but uh, in fact it's going to be a runtime error on the system so okay now we have got the current date let's activate this one 
So yes, done, activated. Let me put a breakpoint at this place. Uh, let me go to my uh, table function. Let me execute it. So let it go to the debugger. Okay. So now we can um, see executing this single statement. I'm just pressing uh, F6. It's gone. So database turned uh, something. Line number 23. What is it? Column 5 at position 637. Uh, unit conversion error. So what is the error? Uh, such table error could not read currency precisions from table. So T correct table HDB dot system dot TCURX invalid table name could not find table or view in uh, schema system. So system schema is not working out for us. So now let me switch to this HANA development for a minute. The systems, uh, let me log in. So here I think the schema that we use is going to be SAP HANA DB. This is going to be common for uh, uh, all the uh, all the products, I guess. So let me use this SAP HANA DB schema. So in this one, if I try to find uh, find a table TCURX, uh, yes we have this tcurx table and if we find this in systems and there is nothing in the system sorry it's finding okay so next to it we see the schema name here sap hana db so these this table exists in sap hana db so find is applicable uh, all the places that's fine we have given the right schema now let me execute it activate it activate it and uh, let me refresh this one switch switch to debug perspective that's what i did and let me uh, run this one at the moment Okay, here we go. So we have got some results. Okay, so in table, we have got 90 entries. And let us check that one uh, for now. Okay. So this is the INR value. So Euro 140 is converted into uh, INR value. If you see this, it's all um, converted into INR value at the moment. Okay, so at this place, we have multiple um, uh, decimals. So four decimals or three decimals, two decimals, no decimals and etc. So if we want to deal with it, again, we will be applying the conversions. So on top of this currency conversion, we just apply the uh, decimal notation conversions, number conversions or floating conversions, whatever uh, available in the conversion functions. Okay, so that is what we observe here. And whatever the currency we um, apply at this place, that has to be filled in, in our uh, 
projection list as well here. Let me execute this one. Fine, executed, switch back to a back perspective. Now let me go here and find a, find a conversion function that uh, converts into a limited decimals. Let me do that. Number functions, maybe. So this number functions, I think uh, we have round, no, we use data type conversions. So in the data type conversions, we use the double maybe or two decimal. Let's go with two decimal. So, and in this case, we just uh, specify the value of value of it and the, uh, how many uh, decimals we want it. And it has some, if you see any of uh, any of the runtime errors, if you use uh, AMDPs and some overflow or some, some errors, and you can straight away come here and check. So it has, clear indication about what is the allowed maximum or minimum value for this. If you see here, so the following the, the converts, this is the example here, and it converts into three decimals. And precisions, so one to 34 precisions, if you see here. So these limitations, if we see sometimes any runtime errors, then directly we can come here and look for um, the guidelines. So uh, two decimal, and this is going to be the um, uh, zero, zero decimal one, and we can uh, most maybe we can use make use of this one, two decimal. Okay, so let me go ahead and use two decimals function for us, how we use. So two ways we can use. So once we uh, calculate this field, then um, we can use two decimal of amount INR. Oh, okay, so it's a calculated field. Uh, we won't be able to uh, use it, that's fine. So like we do in our, we did in our CDSU, let's take this one and uh, Let's apply to conversion here itself. And this is the value returned by a currency conversion function. And we specify what, what is the uh, decimal for this one. Okay. So what is it? Wrong number of arguments. Yes, that's true. I think uh, we have three. Uh, yes, the length of it, and uh, how many decimals we need. We we need for this one. So let, let us specify um twenty two and uh, two decimals here. We'll take two decimals. Let's remove this one. That's it. Activate it. Don't, don't get confused. Um, we are just going very slow. We're just taking reference, SQL reference, and how we need to look at it and how we will be, we are doing it. Fine, so let me go to the result set and let me refresh it. Yes, switch it. Uh, let me press F6. Perfect. Items. Good. And these uh, items, if we go and see now, we have everything in two decimals right now. Okay, it's in good format for us.
So now everything has been converted into uh, INR, but we have not uh, populated the field, the conversion field into, uh, into a new field. So now we clearly see what is the need of parameters here. Now we have different transaction currencies here, but the requirement is to convert into a common currency. Now, what we are doing here, we are just, um, we are just hard coding the value of INR here, but in real time, this is not going, going to be the case. So this currency will be uh, coming from a table function parameter. So we will be using that parameter. What is the common currency to, to convert this uh, into maybe the uh, kind of uh, uh, group currency or it may be a uh, company code currency or whatever. So if we have that determination logic given by the requirement document, then again, we will be uh, determining the um, currency as well inside the MVP. So if we don't want to take it as an input parameter, then we will determine even the currency, currency, uh, the group currency or whatever, the target currency in the MVP itself. So for now, what I do, so here we, we um, might need to learn something about the declarations. So uh, declare LV currency equals to this one. Come on. What is this? Decimal. Decimal. Um, sorry, it's not decimal. Care four. equals to the uh, currency key here. So whenever we define these uh, variables, then it may be um, an issue while uh, exporting parameters. If it, if it doesn't match these parameters, then that also uh, will be an issue. Okay, so uh, let me go here and uh, I think not sure if I will be able to enter uh, characters here. Uh, yeah, it's not allowing me. And I thought of giving some uh, incorrect value here to make this currency uh, currency converter to fail so that we can uh, see whether it is really setting the value to null or not. Okay, anyway, that's fine. We are not able to do that. So in this case, what we have done, we have declared a local variable here. So this is how we declare the local variables with types. Okay, and we have assigned some value to it and we are using that in our um, currency conversion function, DB function. So, let me make it little understandable. Yeah, that's fine now. Okay, the pretty printer, how, what we use, it works uh, for these cases and uh, alignment indexing uh, uh, doesn't work on the AMDP methods here. So that's okay, fine. So now we have got um, the amount, convert, converted amount here, okay? And on top of this, 
what what is our goal what what are we trying to achieve here so we need the total expense and the uh, currency right so total expenses based on trip id we have trip id already here so we want the total expenses for each trip we need the total expenses in a single currency so that means we we are simply um, meaning to it that we need to use the sum aggregation function here so we are going to use some aggregation function so here for time being i have written select star but i'm really going to write it with trip id okay trip id is going to be uh, my field and this lv currency is going to be my currency so whenever we refer to the local uh, variables we do write um, colon and then variable name as currency okay so in this case we have trip id and uh, currency available here now i'm just going ahead and uh, writing a sum aggregation on this itself so don't get confused we are doing uh, multiple things uh, at this place if you see there are um, three three levels of um, functions op operations are being done at this place and where this is and uh, obviously we need to write a group by here group by i'm going to write trip id and the currency here trip id and currency so on this group by let's do convert my uh, total expenses into a common currency this is going to be done and on top of it convert these to decimals restricting to uh, length 22 and uh, decimal places two decimal places and again on top of this sum make a sum or use the sum aggregation group by trip id and currency for me so this is what um, i'm going to do so let me activate this one perfect let me go to my data preview and uh, refresh it okay this time i didn't see the uh, okay this is the okay where is this gone oh fine so i haven't included that in my um, result set yet so we can see only in debugging uh, let me go ahead yes switch so if i press f6 yes that's perfect so if you see these lt items we have uh, 71 at the moment okay so if you see this currency currency have been um, added two times i think the currency is a field on uh, uh, this database table as well so it has taken the currency of database table rather uh, taking it from our uh, uh, alias name so let me uh, make a change this one currency INR or let me make it target currency. This makes more clear. And let me activate it. It's fine. Okay. That's all right. Now let me just refresh it again yes it has come 
into this one oh sorry i'm doing it again and again so this target currency must be the group y what is this mm, okay so this group by again it has to be a database field target currency invalid column name that's fine i know how to deal with it let me uh, come out of it so in the in such cases what we do so it, it always refer to these um, uh, table columns but um, rather if we want to uh, if we want to sum this up based on chip id alone we can do that for now otherwise if we want to uh, exactly group based on the currency itself then we will take another route let me um, write that one as well so this is one result set which will give us um, the total total currency conversions but once we uh, go in here uh, i will not be doing this anymore but instead i'll write I will write this well this field name and I'll change my selection itself. So in this case, I'll be uh, selecting from my local uh, result set here. So here I will not need the client because that that is no more exist in my uh, result set here i'm not uh, projecting the client field so in this case i have trip id and uh, target currency and i will be getting my uh, amount inr summed up as um, converted amount okay so at this place, I'll just go ahead and remove this field. And as I have already um, set group by this one, and as I'm converting already this into a iron knot, I'm fine with it. So let's see both the results. Converted table, and uh, uh, this is what. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, I still need to go with this approach here as well because if we want to check both the approaches, then obviously we need to do, we need to use both of them. doing it then it will be automatically summing up that's okay let's see so in this case if you see this this is not going to be uh, effective for us uh, where um, that's okay go ahead switch and if you see in this case we have these lt items so whereas it's exactly half of the items that we had so if i double click on this one if you see this has been um summed up into a the total amount per trip id so there are no duplicates at the moment so if you want to right click and distinct values, it shows 45 values.
everything everything is same okay now this is the sum <clears throat> sum of value and this statement that we are going to uh, run right now is not going to be impacted anymore because the, there are all unique values based on trip ID. Again, we are performing the same operation. So we have 45 left as it is. So converted the same, same amount here as well. So now once we convert this one, we will uh, just go ahead and uh, add add that into um, our result set. So let us try to add that. I'm just commenting commenting this out for now. Otherwise, if if you plan to uh, do it step by step, <clears throat> step by step, then there will be no aggregation at this point. Okay, no aggregation. Remove your aggregation and just apply the conversion at this place. What is it? Uh, yep. Yeah. What is the error here? Uh, group by expression, yeah. So we don't need group by here. So we just get uh, converted each each item here. And if we want to add trip uh, item as well here for our uh, segregation, we can add our uh, trip item. So whenever we uh, debug, then uh, it it will be a bit easier to easier to uh, look at which trip item is having um, which value. Okay, so in this step, we source uh, we source this LT items as a uh, projection, and we do summation at this point. So it makes sense to go uh, step by step. So in this step, all um, uh, aggregation happens based on the trip ID. Though there is a trip item, we, we will not be considering the trip item at this stage. Okay, so it's the same now. We are going to use this both the steps. Now we have the target, um, what is our field now? total expenses and currency available uh, as a one-to-one -one values in our LT converted table. So let's go ahead here. And this is also, uh, this is a redundant statement that we have written, or this uh, we have written uh, something different like uh, using uh, session context and the parameter. So both are, both are same, but in this case, um, uh, LT header, we are selecting all of them from it. And if we want to um, select or write a join at this place, we can do the converted amount and the target currency here. So converted amount and target currency, uh, these two fields. Uh, left join or left outer join, both are same. Left outer join, ELT converted as um, converted on so we just say trip id equals to okay there may be function available with this reserved word uh, let me want to use this one let me use it as b 
b dot trip id okay so this is the join which i'm going to um, use for our for our join between these uh, standard the header table and the items with the aggregated items value here so it says something uh, uh, to me so column ambiguously defined yes this trip id exists in both uh, both data sets data sources so i need to proceed uh, with the exact um, uh, location or exact specification where it is going to be okay so in this case the join has been built and it has added it has been added with the additional two fields now let us build our result set before that we need to go to our table function and we need to uh, enable these two two fields here total expenses and the currency otherwise we have dedicated fields for them expenses inr and uh, currency inr okay so um uh, let me activate this currency field itself. So that we will not save specifically. Total expenses and currency. We know that internally there are different kinds of uh, different kinds of currencies, but we have converted into a single currency. So let me activate this one. And if I go back to my MDP implementation here, the trip ID, everything is matching. That's fine. And what is what is not matching is converted amount. As we should ensure that the field names are same, as we know this. Uh, policy beforehand and let me um, place the uh, target currency as currency mm -hmm. so still we have some error and this trip id is saying something uh, ambiguously uh, defined so in this case, let us go ahead and uh, put this LT header dot uh, trip ID. Otherwise, um, we can we can uh, define an alias to this one. So this is LT header, and we are just going ahead and adding them that's fine converted amount as total expenses again this total expenses um trip h trip h do we have a field on trip h as well total expenses i don't think um trip up to uh, no, we don't have total expenses there. As uh, H, and here I say H dot. Uh, or is this? Trip ID is the right one, but okay, that's fine. Let me copy the same as it is. 
converted amount okay and this uh, lt header again we are back to this one uh, duplicate attribute names trip id mdp uh, breakpoint okay that's fine let me um, go ahead and write the trip id as b dot trip id as trip id uh, item Again, same message the three point D okay. So this will reduce the Button pass. Let me remove this one and let me put this one. Again, uh, converted amount. Converted no, so just selecting this fields converted amount is not a duplicate. Yes, it is a duplicate, I know that. Can anyone guess why? Can anyone guess why? It is a duplicate. <laughs> uh, yes that star that star is considering uh select star from both both the both the tables so this table and this table okay so now we need to uh, restrict that having the select star this dot star now we are good so now we have error um, here. Let me go ahead with trip ID. And um, now we know that there is no um, duplicate. Perfect. Okay. So this is how it goes. Let me activate this one. Activate it. Let me go to my result set right now. So, existing result set, I can't uh, refresh this one because if you go and see in the SQL console, the total expense will not be available in this field. If we want to add that manually, we can add it. Or just to close this one and relaunch the table function data preview now it will include all the fields that are defined there so if you see they all um, uh, have these values okay it's a matter of uh, adding adding two fields but this this will be like uh, the reality how it works and now we have uh, added another field here trip items so 
uh, let's say if the uh, requirement is to um, display or concatenate all the trip items into one field and display here. So business is clear that there will not be any um, trip items more than more than 10. Okay, but uh, if obviously we will not be doing that if there are more uh, more trip items like uh, 999 or more than that or something 100 more than 100 or something like that we will not be uh, doing that that's not a good practice but this field is to uh, try some other feature for us okay the function what we um, explore so we have the the function what we are um, going to use that is not available on cds okay so to uh to use that function and to bring this value onto the cds layer we we just need to uh, go to amdp uh, creation table function creation so the function whatever we are saying that now we knew the requirement so the all the line item numbers the trip item numbers whatever um, uh, we have so for each for each trip id i want those trip um, item ids to be uh, concatenated and displayed next to the uh, trip id so if you see here these are all individual uh, independent trip ids but if you take this trip id it's going to be uh, uh, same so we have two trip item IDs, 3002 and 3003 for trip ID uh, 2002. So I want, I don't want to display all these many line items in my report, but I want these two to be concatenated into one value separated by comma and then displayed as a uh, another field. So in this case, we we have certain um, uh, functions available to do that one as well so let me go ahead here if you look at the aggregation functions that is again uh, an aggregation but technically uh, if we look at it we are going to uh, work on a string it's not going to be a number number uh, number concatenation will not be the case so we don't have that term at all but it, but we are going to um, consider it as a string we are going to concatenate two strings here so the concatenation is not going to be a straightforward concatenation we will use a function to um, give us after concatenation so let me go to the aggregation functions and see if there are any uh, string related. So if you see here, we see uh, a string aggregation function here. So if we click on this one and we can relatively pick these ones as I know this function and straight away going there. That's why I was just mentioning. So concatenation doesn't happen on uh, numbers, but once we treat this as a string, it's a matter of concatenating two uh, strings. So string, that is where we just look at the term string aggregation or string concatenation, something like that. So this function uh, here, we have string aggregation function, db function available, and it takes an um, uh, expression and it, the delimiter, whatever we want to, okay? And if we, if we want to um, sort this or something, we can even specify this sort. This is the syntax for this, but actual usage we will see. And there is an example as well here. For example, if the number NUM column has one, two, three, four, five, then the string aggregation will, so after writing this string aggregation, num field, and then zero, it returns one, then zero, two, then zero, three, then zero, if you see. So that is what we wanted here. Okay, so we have multiple trip um, trip items. 
So in the in this place, I'm going to give the trip item, and my separator is going to be the uh, hyphen or comma, whatever we want. So now um, let us look at this example here. If you see, so this is how we just use the string aggregation function here. So inside the select itself, so we will be writing this string aggregation. So let me write this uh, string aggregation. Let me copy this one and go here into my uh, Eclipse. So here, I'm just thinking where I can uh, fit this. And this one uh, converted one we have, and here we have group by uh, group by class. So, yep, I think uh, I can write it here. Maybe uh, let me try. So, string aggregation. Then, okay, do I have trip item here? Yes, I have trip item. Trip items. And uh, let me pick the field trip item. So this is the field I want to uh, aggregate. And the, my separator is going to be comma, and I don't want any uh, order by class here. Or if I want to order by, I can again specify a trip item here. And ascending or descending, I can do. That's absolutely fine. OK. So what is it saying? Come on. It's taking some time. Let it come back. Yes, that's fine. So no errors for us right now. So let me activate this one. I see some error somewhere. Okay. So here, uh, return type mismatch. Okay, what is this? Client and yes, return type. Why is it mismatch? Okay, so we have activated these trip items and we have not included these trip items anywhere in. Uh, in our MDP. So let me um, select that one as well here. Chip items. Chip items. So I'll use the same name here as well. Uh, let's just select that one as chip items. Uh, where exactly it is in, I think. Uh, Okay, so if you see, even now it is uh, uh, the structure mismatch. It is very much specific about the order of the fields as well. We need to place this before total expenses. So the before total expenses, we just place it. Now it has gone. So these are all uh, the specific things that we need to care about when we are working on MDPs. So now it is activated. Let me go here and let me close this one. And now uh, let me execute this one. So we have the result here. If you see the trip items, wherever um, the trip items are available they all are concatenated 
and as a result we haven't got any uh, extra or uh, duplicate duplicate values on the trip ids and if you see they are not in order so and we have all our uh, power in our sql we can go ahead and we can uh, implement order by here okay and uh, let me write order by as trip id order by trip id so activate now let me go here and refresh it perfect you see so this is what uh, the string aggregation function does so in real time we might uh, need some uh, some criteria where this functionality specifically is not possible um, in our uh, using cds okay so now uh, we have some other uh, uh, similar functions where we can make use so some of the uh, important uh, functions here which we should remember that um, there are a row number and this is one of the function which we might be needing and uh, there is another one a rank rank function here so this rank these two are uh, pretty much needed in all uh, cds cases so this rank actually it de it defines rank based on the uh, values and the ordering what we define in the set of uh, uh, in data and whatever the field name we define here so this is the partition which the keyword we use here it's it, it uh, refers to an window the window when we speak about window or whenever you read a window specification here that doesn't mean that um, something else it's just array of values it's a table of values so we just specify a range of values okay so in that particular range of values so what what do you want to um, rank it so that's what it is so in here if you see uh, ball cap is the range window where where uh, it has been specified so product name is the window here okay on the product name and order by sales so this is the field name order by here and decide decide the rank for me in the sales it definitely takes the value um, and uh, uh, decides the rank of it so if you see in this ball cap the top value is 60 the rank has been one and there are matches tie, tying up values with 40 and it has been given with two and here it has eight value and this value is four but in between if you see the rank three has been missed okay that's with the 40 and 40 yes yes so this is what it's a behavior okay and if if we want to um, uh, decide this ranking and want to display the same ranking numbers uh, in any of our requirements then it is not possible using cds and definitely we should be uh, taking help from uh, mvp and similarly if you don't want to do it uh, to whatever wherever the values are matching but instead you want to rank them or give those all um, uh, numbers a specific unique number the sequence number like one two three four then rank is not the right choice row number is the right choice so if you go to row number it doesn't care about what it is whatever if the window is matching it straight away goes ahead and uh, put uh, put the count on it and it counts uh, starts putting the number on it okay if you see so these three are matching and it has one two three one two three numbers it it keeps going so even if you uh 
end up with the sales matching values and etc even it doesn't care it just keeps incrementing the uh, row number here so this is um, required <clears throat> when um, for example let's say in, even uh, in our example here so the user wanted to uh, list list down the okay let's uh, let's go ahead and implement that row number here so at this place i am going to um, okay i'm going to implement the row number as well here so comma i don't know if i can use this field inside this one always that uh, restricts usage on the database fields okay uh, let us uh, not do that there then here uh, on this one lt items we have okay so lt max okay let us first understand the requirement so in this particular one we have different currencies on our um, items but the requirement is the business wanted to know what is the um, costliest costliest trip in this one in this particular trip what is the costliest leg so obviously in this case if we write uh, uh, if we write uh, maximum we can bring the value right whatever the value but again we have multiple currencies at this place uh, we won't be able to do it straight away but even after considering or converting into the group currencies then we uh, we might we must be um, uh, we must be getting that value not the trip number there right so if we write uh, left out of join obviously it's gonna add all the line items and if we write inner join again it's 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 going to restrict but it's not going to bring only one line item in abap code how we do it we just um, uh, sort our internal table by descending or descending on the price and we just pick the first line item that's how we deal this particular requirement in our map but same thing we want to do same thing we want to achieve using um cds approach what what is going to be the way so in the in that case we will be coming here and using this uh, row number function and we will be uh, calculating the uh calculating the uh, rank or row number for that one by keeping the uh, price converted price descending order so that in next where condition we can restrict okay pick me whatever has the rank or um the row number one for me right so that's how we just um uh, consider it and also this can be compared with um, delete adjacent duplicates statement on internal tables in our map so whatever the fields we want it to be in the specific order we just mention our sorting order and then in the next next statement we just write delete adjacent duplicates so that our first line stays as it is Okay, so now we are going to achieve that functionality using this row number function, row number uh, function, DB function available here. So um, LT costly, I would say. The costly equals to, let me uh, select from this one. Select star from this table and okay here we have um oh sorry 
and now let me go ahead and write this row number function so we don't want to use our brain to remember all those uh, syntaxes if we know there is a function available then just go ahead and uh, copy this one from here so i just copy it and uh, place it paste it here and over partition what is the partition here i'm going to do so my partition is going to be um what is this so that doesn't have uh, my order by class i think i need uh, the order by class yes so this partition or order by class so partition this based on trip id not the trip item okay so let me pick up this trip id here trip id and order by what is what is the order by here uh come on where is it amount inr amount inr this is going to be my converted amount amount inr descending and so my row number will be decided but here I will name it as costly. Costly rank. So let us take a take a look on this one uh, before we include that um, uh, in in the result set. And by this one, uh, do we need any? E yes i think we have this already order by no there is no order by but here we will need order by order by um trip id yeah that's fine so order by trip id we need because we are doing it uh, partition partitioning by trip id so uh, order by also trip id perfect let me activate it so i'm not using any my own knowledge here so it's all just copy paste working so let us let us test this okay switch perfect and let me uh, go here so now in our lt items we have 90 and let's let's take a look at this oh we already know about these 90 entries come on okay so here there is there is no field like uh, costly or something so let us execute the next lines next statement here perfect lt costly let's go into lt costly here so here will be the magic perfect so if you see here wherever there is no second line item they are straight away ranked as one. And if you see in the um, uh, trip number two, so whatever is having more um, maximum amount that has been ranked one, and the next one has been ranked two. And in this three, we have three uh, legs in the third, third trip. If you see, they have been uh, ranked one, two, three according to their uh, amounts okay so now we have the trip id and um, uh, trip item id both of them available here so now it's easy for us to add this trip uh, trip item uh, id into our result set so we will be we will be uh, writing a where condition um, where the costly rank equal to one 
So that's going to be our filtration criteria. Okay, let's go ahead and write that statement. Let me go into my web perspective. So here we have costly here. That's okay. Now uh, this is going to be my converted amount summation. I don't want to disturb this one, but my addition is going to be LT header. This is where um, uh, we will be adding our trip item ID costly as C on. So again, I'll be joining this on trip ID. Trip ID equals to C dot trip ID and and costly rank equals to one. I just say one. And now in this one, um, okay, we have target currency and everything uh, two times. So we need to mention uh, which target currency in this case. So B dot and it's going to be uh, B dot. And next one is going to be C dot trip item. So now we see um, the mismatch with our structure, I think. Okay, there is no mismatch with the structure. Now let's go ahead and add here. Um, total expense trip items and next to this costly uh, costly item so let's put this costly item as same type okay let's activate it Let's copy this field name and let's go to our MDP. Where is this one here? Um, trip items before or after uh, trip items, after trip items, after trip items. Let's put this and um, trip item or we can even uh, name this here itself as costly item and just write the costly item here perfect done let's activate it here we go so let me go ahead and close this one and again relaunch this one uh, okay i don't want to go into the debugging but let's stop this debugging let me go into a web perspective and see my results here perfect so if you see these results, the next to it, these are all the trip items available. And out of these trip items, this is the costliest trip, costliest item. Make sense? Yeah, realistic? Yeah. So this is how we make use of um, uh, AMDPs effectively and wherever now wherever we see some functions are being used then we can uh, immediately strike to our mind that okay so these functions are different functions they are completely HANA based functions we should uh, refer to our uh, library here so whatever the functions of the statements whatever available and we can make use of them that's that's what uh, uh, 
uh, after this amdp session should register in our mind okay and the feasibilities on these amdps um, we can call uh, we can call our um, uh, this amdp in another amdp as well okay uh, the abap based amdp procedure as well we can call inside our, our table function again so in that case we will be just referring um, the using using class here in the using we will be uh, placing the class method here like this so class and uh, what is the method get details so using we will mention like this and we just go ahead and uh, call this method like um uh what is that yeah so select star from we just write like um and then we open double quotes then we place this uh method here i think i might be using this wrong wrong method here um the it it has to be the uh, mdp procedure method okay uh, let me use single quotations nope this has to be double quotes and uh, we i think we must we must have this in uh, upper cases okay we can convert that later Okay, then if there are any parameters, we just uh, 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 like uh, import or export uh, parameters, like how we are calling our function here with the parameters, it will be uh, same, same like that. Okay, so in this case, I think it has to be a database procedure, not the table function. For database procedure, um, there is no procedure in valid call cycle. Okay, so it is again as we are calling inside this one, uh, it's not allowing it. That's what it is. And in this place, we can uh, use uh, DDIC SQL views and uh, CDS entities both in the using class. We can use both. Um, not the ddic based cds entities if if you have defined view syntax then we should be using the sql view of it okay the the view whatever we specify here view or database table that must be that must exist on the hana database so in our defined view case the cds view name whatever we create that doesn't exist in the cd in the hana database but instead sql view will be available in uh, on a database the sql view name we have to give here and if we use syntax um, defined view entity then we are we are happy to use that one because that is right away uh, get created in the on the on a database itself okay if we want to uh, specify uh, specify that one ddic uh views use ddic sql names but in case of um cds entities use the direct view name and also we can use all uh, db tables here in the using class using possibilities okay i'm just activating it so I thought of covering more apart from um, uh, AMDPs, 
but uh, uh, all of our time gone into this AMD piece. That's okay anyway. So if you uh, if I would like to go for another 10, 15 minutes, I'm happy to cover a couple of CDSU types. So the another CDSU types, uh, so AMDP is, is over for now. So if you see any left router join or inner router join or whatever somewhere and the same, if you are um, expert writing, uh, writing native SQLs, then of course you can straight away go ahead and implement all um, uh, all your native SQL code here. So no uh, uh, no stoppage at all. So keeping all mind that if something goes wrong, it's directly gonna uh, end up in runtime errors. Okay. Apart from that, uh, we are uh, happy with this AMD piece. So whatever is not possible using CDS, then just um, if we think that is possible uh, to be developed on uh, database, then we will be directing that onto the database and we will write it. And AMDPs, they are not straight away AMDPs. Whenever we call it as AMDP, then the straight we should uh, look at a web point of view. Whenever we refer it as table function, then only it uses this one and comes um, to the AMDP class and takes back the data to CDS layer. That's how uh, the types of uh, AMDPs. Okay. So now uh, it's time for us to look at another types of um, uh, CDS views. So let me go ahead and uh, define a new definition here. So the new def new um, the new CDS view type which we are going to do is now abstract, abstract CDS view. So this abstract CDSU, um, CDSUs are uh, used in uh, RAP processing majorly. So RESTful, uh, about RESTful application programming. So whenever um, we want to have a structure, okay? So abstract by name itself, we can, uh, we can uh, sense that there will be no implementation. So if we know about abstract classes, so abstract classes will not have, um, may or may not have implementation, but in CDS abstract entities, for sure there will not be uh, any implementation um, on this abstract class, abstract CDS views. But why then why we do, why we uh, create the uh, abstract entities here? So this abstract entity, um, this will not be created in database. It's just a, uh, a structure created on the CDS layer. So this will be used um, in developing um, RAP applications and V4, uh, V4 uh, uh, Odata services, whereas these will be used as uh, class import and export parameters in structure format. Okay, so there we need a facilitation to declare some structures without the implementations. So that's the reason these abstract entities have been introduced by SAP. So there is no uh, exactly no not real usage. So how we create a structure in our DDIC uh, uh, S11. So it's the same, but this doesn't exist um, in the database. Okay, it's completely a virtual model, I would say. So if we want with parameters, we create with parameters. Otherwise, we just go without parameters and it's going to be again the same as I have mentioned this already. If we want to uh, create a structure, we just need to create along with its um, parameters. So now our abstract uh, CDS view is ready now but here if you see when we create abstract um, abstract cds use as it is um, uh, price it need uh, it expects uh, the um, uh, reference so here we just follow our uh, semantics 
okay semantics dot amount dot currency code so in this currency code we just refer this uh, currency code if there are any reference fields that's it so that uh, even when we create a database dictionary structure in s11 we we must give um, a reference to the all reference fields currency or unit um, uh, specifications okay so whenever we uh, move into the wrap wrap programming or if you uh, try on your own picking up wrap in future sometime then abstract type we should we shouldn't be get confusing what is this abstract type it's just defining a structure and uh, reusing it in uh, uh, other wrap application programming and also this structure abstract entity can be used in other programs and global classes as well so there is no uh, there is no restri restriction to uh, use this in our web programs. So this also can be uh, referenced um, as a structure in any of the class or function module import or export parameters. This straight, straight away, this can be used uh, anywhere across the uh, application layer and CDS layer, a web layer and CDS layer, wherever possible. Okay, and this cannot contain any any implementation, and this is what we can do with it with the abstract entity. Okay, I think uh, this is the fastest topic we finished. The uh, abstract abstract entity, and there is uh, another type of CDSU. Let me uh, go ahead and create another type of um, CDSU. I custom custom entity. So this custom entity is a bit uh, uh, different from this one. If you see here, we have um, extend custom entity and define um, custom entity. Where is uh, define custom entity? I don't see define custom entity, define custom entity with parameters. So again, it is up to us whether we want um, the parameters on this cds view so if we don't want any any of the parameters we just go ahead and remove these uh, parameters and i'm going to use the same structure here as well so the same structure is going to be used in this one let me uh, go ahead and uh, put the structure so what is the difference between um, the custom entity and uh, the abstract entity the custom entity will be having implementation. So this implementation, again, with respect to um, a class and a method, okay? So right now we have seen um, fetching the data from the database layer. So if we want to fetch any data from database layer, we go for table function. What if we want to fetch data from ABAP layer? using a plain ABAP code and it could, it could involve a um, number of function modules and complex logics but if we want that result set to be available in CDS is there a way and this is the way so if you define um, a custom entity and we will be uh, writing some some annotation here object model object model dot uh, Custom, or oh, what is that? Uh, let me uh, recollect. Yeah, query something. Yeah, query dot implemented by. So here we will be giving our ABAP name here ZCLTH custom entity and then method get trip trip header. So the method, whatever we um, uh, use here, this method should have uh, a return type of this one. But again, this will match with the uh, return type. We don't need to worry about it. And there is an interface to be used. So if uh, ASCDL, I think is it ASCDL? 
no not sla that is for different rap if rap let me take its help no it's not displaying that's fine uh, rap something query let me take its help from here so yes so here we have all these um, uh, interfaces so these are all the interfaces which are um, uh, supporting the custom entity if you see here provider so in this we have select functionality so in this select whatever the class we are going to create slash to c24 and uh, let me create this class zcl and uh, this one oh sorry there will not be method name here because the query provider always have uh, select so this is the class only class name we mentioned here uh, okay need to close that one query provider and let me take this class Okay, create it and custom entity, save it as in Tara. That's okay. Um, any request is fine. Don't mind. Okay, so let us go into interfaces and put this interface here if uh, rap so these all the interfaces um, have been uh, part of rap development so we are partly covering uh, the rap rap methodology as well so if you go into this method um, the interface method we already have this io request and io response so we just go ahead and uh, uh, use these instances and implement implement the logic. So if I save this and activate it, uh, custom entity. Okay, that's fine. Let me activate this one first, and then I go here and I just activate this one. So this custom entity has been activated. So now we can straight away come here and we can put the breakpoint. So this can be debugged. Okay, so if I execute this one, come on, where is it gone? Yep, uh, a BAP application data preview is not available for custom entities okay that's fine so if we publish this one uh, as an odata service obviously um, we will be uh, getting that getting that into a gateway client so whenever we uh, execute a get entity set then obviously we will be getting um, uh, we will be getting the call into this implementation here so this is how um, this custom entity will be used so now we know the ways if cds wants to purely connect to database we have table functions if the cds view purely want to connect to a BAP, a BAP layer then it's a defined custom entity okay so if you if you practice all these um, uh, thing part of it and try to uh, implement this one and see how how it works so i will place the um, help help url in our um, uh, useful urls notepad okay so um, this is the type of um, another type of a custom entity uh, cdsu type and we have another type of cdsu which is a projection cdsu 
So the projection, um, we, I think we can see it here by creating new CDSU. Projection CDSU. So what it does, it uh, in the projection, we shouldn't be using any um, uh, database tables or uh, SPL views, DDIC based SPL views. Uh, directly on this projection views. So it's only uh, the specific usage or recommended usage is at uh, uh, C level. I mean, um, the consumption consumption level uh, views can be used using this projection. So if you see the projection, again, uh, there are some uh, further, further uh, specifications, whereas the uh, layers actually so transactional uh, query the provider contract we say projection on this one um, projection as i think you may get confused the projection uh, provider contracts there are different layers like a transactional layer a analytical layer and a transactional interface so where if we specify that uh, provider contract, then this projection will uh, behave differently. The, the syntactical checks also will change. Uh, if we don't want, we, we can even develop like this, how we are doing right now. This is abstract. Let me load full content. Uh, yep, it is loaded. And I think, uh, let me use this one. Um, this sees something looking like uh, on layer above. Uh, let me add all the fields on this one. So what is it saying? Transactional projection view must be part of a business object. So here, um, this has to be part of business object. That means uh, whenever we say, whenever we see these kind of um, uh, error related to any business object, then obviously uh, we should be adding uh, object model annotation. Okay, so in this object model annotation, um, okay, that's fine. So. I need to uh, search for that one, but uh, I do not want to make you overload on uh, hurry mode. So I will stop it here. I'll leave it as it is, and we'll we'll start with this projection views um, tomorrow, and then uh, we'll continue. So we have more more to do. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you for today.